Hello everybody and welcome back to another satisfactory video and today we're going to be talking about how to get to coal power. Don't mind my messy ass factory here but I've got five important points, five main points to make on your journey to getting coal power. Now my first point is to, of course, start the game, and I have a video on that, how to start Satisfactory. And if this is your first playthrough, and you're just kind of looking at videos for advice on how to play the game, I do have a 30 minute video, I know it's kind of long, but it goes in super depth of how to start the game, and the best way to start the game, and it gives you, gives you a bunch of tips and tricks on beginner stuff, and it's, it's an amazing video, I'll, I'll link it in the description and in the clickable links in the top right corner. But beyond that, you're going to want to make sure that if this isn't your first game, you check mark the skip the onboarding process so that you can start at tier 1. Along with starting at tier 1, I want you to make sure you build your hub central to your iron, copper, and limestone. Now my hub is, it's a little off center, it's kind of closer to my iron here and then I've got a copper node there, a copper node there, and if you can see it way back there, here I'll zoom in, way back here I've got my limestone. So it's kind of far away, but it's close for the most part, it's good enough. Now for my second point, I want you to make sure you start automating everything as soon as possible. Like as soon as you can start automating stuff, you start doing it, like immediately. If this is your first ever game, I want you to power through that tier zero and get your constructors and your your logistics and just get everything unlocked and start connecting stuff up, even if it's just having a miner on a node so that you don't have to collect from a regular miner and it's just on a belt to a storage container, that's better than nothing. But just start automating as soon as possible. Now for my third point, that is, there is a very specific way that I believe, personally, you should be unlocking your research, or uh, whatever you want to call this, your tiers. So, you definitely, definitely want to unlock, once you get through tier 0, of course, you want to unlock logistics. Very first thing, you should unlock logistics. For the second thing, you should definitely unlock obstacle clearing so that you can feed those biomass burners as fast as possible. Now, I would recommend automating your solid biofuel as well, and what I had going on over here was I had a couple of storage containers, and they stored leaves and wood for when I went out over there and collected it, and then I just belted it up into here onto two different constructors that would feed another constructor. These these two constructors back here. Now for the third thing I believe you should unlock, and it's, it's mostly optional, but I would highly recommend it, because it's going to help you. You'll get personal storage box, you'll get inventory slots and an extra hand slot, and you can re you'll have something to do while you're waiting for your factory to build stuff up. I would recommend unlocking field research, but like I said, it's completely optional. After that, you're going to want to go back into tier 2 and make sure you unlock part assembly, and these copper sheets are going to be important for when we get to coal power. And lastly, you're going to want to unlock Logistics Mark II, and this will take you all the way to my fourth main point for the space elevator. And for the space elevator, it's kind of a, it kind of fucks you over, I'm not going to lie. But when you unlock part assembly, you get smart plating. Now, this was the third thing I had you unlock. Unless you unlocked field research, then it would be the fourth thing. But I would recommend starting to make this smart plating right away as soon as possible. And that is because when you unlock the space elevator, the first thing you have to put in it, is, it's not this, it's 50 smart plating. Not 500, but fi it's just 50 of this. And that can be kind of a pain in the ass at first. So I would suggest just immediately starting to make that smart plating. Now with smart plating, you can't make it by hand. You have to automate it, so you can't make this by hand. 
So if I was you, I would just forget about everything until you make 50 smart plating with an assembler. Now, it's going to be kind of hard because you're going to need to make rotors and reinforced iron plates. And then you're going to have to put those two into an assembler. And it, it can be kind of complex, but it's not that, it's not that bad. You, you can see that I was pretty messy over here. And from right here, I had these two going into another assembler. And it was pretty messy, but once you get the job done, you can worry about organizing later. So just get your 50 smart plating, jam it into the space elevator, and then you'll unlock tier 3 and 4, and you'll get coal power. So my fourth main point was the space elevator. So just get that smart plating. You can't make it by hand. You have to automate it, and just forget about everything until you are done making that 50 smart plating. Now to my fifth point... Give yourself a pat on the back because you made it you're at coal power this is one of the biggest milestones in the game in my opinion and it, it's just amazing so you get the coal generator water extractor you get pipeline pipeline support pipeline junction cross pipeline pump fluid buffer and you can now scan for coal now if you started in the desert like i did the closest place for coal is going to be quite a ways away so you're going to have to if you built your hub here I mean, I don't know where you built your hub, but the closest place to get coal in the desert, at least in the center-ish part of the desert, is all the way over here. Come up these hills, come up here, you find this rock next to limestone, you'll find this pond, and you'll be like, oh, I can put my water extractors here and make my, my coal power plant. Yeah, I thought the same thing, but there's no coal for quite a ways. So the best way to do it, there's more limestone here, you can jump down here, but before you do that, make sure you have enough make sure you have enough materials to make at least at least 10 storage containers because when you fall down here, you're not going to be able to get back up and the best way to do it is going to be to build like 10 to 20 storage containers up this hill right here, just stack them and use the ladder on the side of them to just climb all the way up. Or, alternatively, you could use the stackable conveyor pole, but that costs a little bit more materials. Well, it costs different materials. But it, it's up to you, really, which one you want to use. But the closest coal is going to be right here, and they're both impure nodes. So that is why I strongly recommend you unlock the field research tier, or whatever you want to call it. Because then you can find some power slugs research them turn them into power shards and you can upgrade these miners with two power shards each to get your 60 which is like a regular or normal node and you'll get 60 from each making 120 and this is why we unlock the logistics mark 2 and i think okay i'm missing i'm a dummy oh let me fix that quick Alright, sorry about that, I just had to fix my conveyor belt because I'm a dummy head and didn't change it to a Mark II. Anyways, once you get these two coal nodes down here, you figure out how to get down here, etc. I'm using mods because I've played this game quite a bit already and I just find it more convenient to be able to fly and just personally I find it more fun. Anyways, not the point. Once you get these two coal nodes, you can do whatever you want with them, however you want to work this out, you can just... Put your water extractors down, you know, make your coal generator power plant. However you want to do it, you can do it your way. But I would recommend, personally, I would recommend taking these two coal nodes, putting four power shards total, two in each miner, combining them into a conveyor merger, and I would route them into eight coal generators. Now, you definitely don't have to do this. You can set up a plot like this if you want. You can start to build something like this if you want, but you don't have to completely finish it because every coal generator only uses 15 coal per second, or excuse me, per minute each. So if you have four coal generators, you're only using 60 coal per minute. So you could just do this and only have these four here and just combine it up like this for just the four and connect these two impure nodes 30 each onto a 60 line and just split it up into four which will give you 300 megawatts of power and that that can work that'll be fine and then you could just finish it out once you have enough for four more generators 
and then just make sure you change or not change rather but get the power shards in the miners and convert convert it to a 120 line and just split it up like this so how it works is you get 120 cubic meters of water from each extractor per minute and one coal generator uses 45 cubic meters of water per minute so if you multiply 45 by 8 that's 300 I'm just gonna make sure I'm not an idiot and do it on a calculator excuse me it's 360 and 120 times 3 is 360 yeah I'm a dummy so then you just need to pipe out each extractor straight out I usually how I do it is I put a pipeline support to the left of this one and to the right of that one and then I just pipe this one out straight into a pipeline junction and then I connect all three of them up just like just like this as you see connect them all out into a pipeline junction and then make sure you put these pumps here so that you can split this water extractor into the two other ones and then this will come over here and go from this pipeline support all the way down to the other pipeline support and you just put a pipeline junction at every coal generator make sure that your pipeline type i guess you could call is on not default but push r it changes it to, to conveyor 2d push it again make sure it's on vertical so once you connect this pipeline junction here i'll just do this quick so if we take it from here and we put it as default and we oh i suppose it works conveyor 2d is the one that doesn't work so you want to make sure you're either using vertical or default. I personally just like vertical because I just like how it looks. It gives you this cool little straight upward. I don't know. I, I like it. Anyways, so just connect it just like that. And then for the coal, it's just as simple. You put a conveyor splitter at each input for the coal generator and just do it overflow style like this here. Boom. Just like that. And if you're wondering if it's bad or worse to do it overflow style like this, I have a video on how to do an overflow factory and I kind of mention a little bit in there about the differences between overflow and load balancing, but I will be doing a future video on a load balancing versus overflow system and they're actually the same. The only difference is that load balance starts off at 100% efficiency right away whereas overflow just takes like 10 to 20 minutes maybe to become 100% efficient. But other than that, that concludes the video for today. And if you enjoyed, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe or comment down below and let me know what kind of video you want out there. Maybe I'll put it out there for you. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Peace!